Oh, right, I got it. I got it. I okay. got it. Hey, Ryan. It's Padraig Harrington. There's Paul. Called Padraig. Ryan, you... <laughs> How are we doing, guys? You can call Patrick. <laughs> yes. Did that actually happen? Patrick's still logged in from the other day. Yes. Hey, so what are you wearing exactly here, Patrick? What is that you got on you? Oh, okay, then. Can we watch some of your uh, some of your drills? Patrick, Hey. God, if you, I tell you what, if you saw my drills, okay, then, can you imagine what I do in private? Do in public? I, I have been thinking of doing like it, you know, just leave the video on, do a live thing, and I think I have a bad enough reputation as it is without going down that road. This is the, this is the kind of crack staff that I have to deal with here. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Feherty Up Close from a Distance. Today, I have a guest who's a special friend of mine. He is, uh, I think, what you'd call the director uh, emeritus, maybe, or the announcer emeritus of NBC Sports, a legend in the broadcasting industry as far as I'm concerned, Mike Tirico. Mike, thanks for joining me. Nobody else is showering. Nobody else is making themselves look TV presentable. And you are in the full Faraday regalia. Like, you have sweats on under there, I hope. I, I'm not wearing pants. I've seen you sleep in those clothes, and <laughs> I've worked with you, and I've seen what you wear under the desk, so it's fully understandable. You have, yeah, yeah, full disclosure. And um, I see you've had your hair cut. I have. Yeah, I'm oh, having difficulty whole... with I mine. Know. Yeah, I, mean, I can't get anybody to get close enough to me to cut my hair. I have clippers. I can send you my old clippers if you just want to buzz yeah. the whole thing. I'm going to keep mine. It's, it's the only thing that I, I have left. And I, I'll tell you something. My gray hair is heading south. Um, why? It's growing down? It's getting... Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. is, is this cable? Or what, what are the... Yeah, this is, this is whatever we want it to be. Yeah. Okay, so there's NBC level stuff. <laughs> there's stuff you can get away with on Golf Channel. That's there's right. There's a live Faraday show, and there's this. There's this. Yeah, we're going okay. deeper and deeper. Yeah. Where yeah, Where are you? Where I'm are you? in Michigan. I am home. So we were all together in uh, Ponte Vedra Beach at the Players when everything shut down. And that was fun. I mean, it's not funny. But we were all together Wednesday in mm. our little trailer uh, doing our meeting. Then we were all together Thursday on the air. And then Friday, we all scattered and we all went yeah. all over. So I, I ended up staying in Florida for a couple of weeks. I wanted to make sure that we did the whole self-isolation deal because I had traveled that week. Gosh, Houston, L.A., Atlanta, Jacksonville. And I'd just been around like a thousand people, literally, you know, it, it close yeah. enough. So I just didn't want to bring it back for my family. So I stayed in Florida for a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, the weather in Florida was better than the weather in Michigan. So self-isolation yeah. was uh, self-involved. It was for me, you know. Um, so that went okay. And then I came back up to Michigan with my family last week. So we're all here and hunkered down. We are one county west of Detroit. Uh, Detroit has been really socked uh, pretty hard. Right. So it's, um, it's a tough time. A lot of our area hospitals are not only treating the locals, but also treating people uh, from the Detroit area. It's really a tough time around these parts. Yeah, uh, yeah, it sure is. Um, tell me a little bit about Ann Arbor. It's a really cool town. It's a college town. And as you know, you've traveled around a bunch, David, around America. Uh, college towns have an energy to them yes. that is a little bit different. Uh, you've got a lot of professors. Uh, there's a great hospital here, so you have a lot of doctors. So a lot of these really smart people, and then somebody like me wears makeup and talks on TV for a living about sports. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't really fall into the higher end of the intelligence quotient here in town. But uh, it's a really great town because there's a vibrancy. There's always something going on, and uh, it's been a great place for us to raise our kids. Well, I've got a trivia question for you about oh. uh, the, the place in which you live. Who was Ann Arbor? I thought it was related to a tree as like an arbor, but you have an answer for me? No, you're absolutely correct. Moving on. Um, let's say it's like this is like a daily is. double on Jeopardy. Just I, I hoped you were going to make something up. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the Olympics. Do you think they made the right decision? 
Uh, you, you had to understand the Japanese people had been planning this for seven years. So they were hoping uh, against hope that their early action, they closed their schools back in January, early February. They were hoping that that was going to be enough. Uh, since they did push the Olympics back and postpone it almost exactly one calendar year, Japan has seen a spike, and they, again, are in a month of a state of emergency. So that's led some folks to wonder, were they just trying to hide what was going on currently for the status of the Olympics? It was uh, very important politically, very important financially and economically. I mean, you, you've come to the Olympics, so you know the whole drill, David. It's it's crazy. You have to find a place to house 11,000 athletes plus uh -huh. everybody else. I read something like almost a million hotel rooms were booked for the Olympics. I don't know how accurate that number is, but it gives you an idea that the logistics of pushing it back had to be very, very deep. And without getting too too deep in the weeds here, 206 countries compete in the Olympics. So it had to fit into their calendars as national governing bodies. Yeah. For each uh, sports federation, there are 33 different sports, golf being just one of them, that had to find a place in their calendar. So you couldn't say, let's throw it in April of next year. That'll work. Well, we get the Masters or Hilton Head, whatever. So by pushing it back a year, at least it gives it a chance, hopefully if everything's better in the world, to bring the world back together. What do you think uh, it does to the athletes that have spent all this time preparing for and, and getting a place on, on that uh, amazing, uh, becoming an Olympian? Being an Olympian is such an unbelievable honor. Very few of the Olympians leave as gold, silver, or bronze medalists, but they all live as, leave as Olympians. And you could be in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. You could be... Uh, in Scotland, you could be in New Zealand, you could be in Brooklyn. If somebody says they're an Olympian, you go, you were in the Olympics? So yeah. that title really matters. And I thought one of the best things that happened was uh, IOC President Thomas Bach, who was a gold medal fencer for West Germany in 1976, he announced and helped lead the charge for this that anybody who made the Olympic team is going to remain an Olympian. So at least those folks know their work will not go unrewarded. The other part is what you're talking about, though. There's about 45% of the Olympians who have not qualified yet. And will their bodies one year older make it? Or will the bodies of these 17, 18-year-olds who have one more year of maturity be ready to knock some of the others out by a tenth or a hundredth of a second? We'll never know. And that's going to be a pit in the stomach of those who were right on track to qualify and don't. So this this will certainly impact the, the history of their sport, their legacy. It's small potatoes considering what we're really talking about with all this. But the Olympics that we see, hopefully, in July of 2021, will certainly not be with the same exact 11,000 plus athletes that we were going to see the 2020 games in. Yeah, it's very, very difficult, very tough time. But David, uh, like, you have a hopefulness about you at times. And so do I. I'm really hopeful that 15 months from now, you know, July of 2021, we can see that site at the opening ceremony that just sticks with me more than anything I've done in sport. And that's you're sitting up in the booth, the opening ceremony is taking place and all the well choreographed and super talented stuff's happened out there. And then the athletes come in and then you sit back and there are 11,000 athletes from 206 countries all in one place. And that seems so so far from imaginable right now that we'd have that many people that close in proximity gathered in one place. And the only place that's going to happen is the Olympics. And you just hope that when we get there, the Olympics can um, inspire us that the life we knew is not gone and we can get back to some of it again at some point. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk a little bit about the return of sports when, when we finally get back to it. What do you think golf is going to look like? Golf is going to be interesting. I heard a friend of ours, Andy North, say uh, the other day that he thought it was going to be really difficult to be playing majors or events without fans. What's the Masters going to be like if they play in November without those roars when somebody knocks it close at 13 or 15 with a second shot, right? Um, or, or that just energy people do provide, even though they're dead quiet in golf, right? They're quiet. Uh, it's one of the sports like auto racing that, the playing of the competition is not going to be impacted because there are no fans there. Because in auto racing, it's loud. And in golf, it's totally quiet when they're playing and hitting shots. But that crowd to feed off of the energy, there is a palpable energy 
uh, you're, you're sitting over there at 16 at the players championship. You know what that's like. There's a juice to the place. Mm -hmm. and that's not going to be there at the biggest events. Think about people crowded around that awesome clubhouse at Wingfoot or um, you know, at the PGA. Think of the Harding Park when we saw John Daly and Tiger play in a WGC event moons ago. It was just a good energy and guys feed off that. Um, it's different than going out and playing against your buddy. So I think the mood's going to be different. It'll be very different for any of us who are announcing those events. Yeah. But I do think, Dave, don't you, that it'll help people if some of that stuff comes back on TV um, and there's something to sit down and get lost in and escape in that is uh, that's something that you feel good about and you get in and mentally and emotionally to the competition, even if the fans aren't there? You know, it's it's going to be strange, that's for sure. But I I halfway think that you know they, they've piped in bird songs at the Masters before. We could put in a laugh track, you know, like on a sitcom, because uh, it would be just too weird to have no noise, too silent, Mike. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, th this is like that. This has been fantastic, and you're going to be the first uh, two-parter, I think, in Ferry up close from a distance. Um, you know, because we just got too much to talk about. Thank you so much for joining me today. But we're, we're going to find you again. That's for I'm sure. Coming back? Yeah, you oh are. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow. Do I do I wear anything different when I come back? No, you don't have to. Do the Will same your thing. Hair be cut. You exactly the same thing for the next four or five days. So. Okay. Will your hair be cut? No, I doubt it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. But thank right. you, Mike. I'll, I'll I'll work through it. Thank you, pal. Thirty is presented by. Farmers Insurance. Hey everyone in Golf Channel Land, it's David Feherty here. I'm at home in Dallas spending a little time with my wife and my daughter Erin and my two dogs, Bertie and Phoebe. Um, I hope you're doing great, uh, sticking together if you're at home and staying apart if you're outside. Please do your part. And if you get bored, uh, you can go to the Golf Channel YouTube page and look me up because we're doing some pretty special things, I think, here, considering that nobody's allowed to go anywhere.